Marvel Comics are celebrating Pride Month in 2024 by celebrating the allies of their LGBTQ plus IA plus community characters that they have. And people are not happy about this, Doc. And I must say, I think I'm on these people's sides. Why are we always have to make this about straight white chicks? The editorial staff at Marvel are a bunch of narcissistic weirdos that decided that since they're just allies, they need to celebrate themselves this time. Well, we do have some details in the kickback regarding this from, I think her name is Ashley Babb. Maybe she's the uh, editor in chief at Popverse. I'm not really sure. She said this poorly made decision to highlight allies during the month of pride has already begun to backfire on the comics internet. And whether the idea for the line came from a good place or not, I can honestly imagine a group of people thinking this was a good affirming idea. It highlights an ever-present danger when it comes to narratives surrounding the struggles of the marginalized, the privileged distancing themselves from the actual struggle. We see this with the white savior narrative, but the white savior isn't where it stops and starts. At this point, when is it not Pride Month? That I mean, well, that's the point. Os- ostensibly, it's only supposed to be June, but now it's you know, 365 fucking days of fly your freak flag and scream it from the rooftops. So honestly, are you surprised that whenever it comes time for actual pride month, when it's essentially pride year, all year, every year these days that um, somebody else decides so you got special attention throughout the entire year, eh, even though this is technically your month, I'm tangentially associated with you so i'm going to use it to get attention for myself now they do go into some more details that i don't think ashley babb really makes a point here stories supposedly about struggles for justice focusing on those who are least impacted by the issues coming in to help not only prioritizes a specific sort of activism but it also helps distance those in power from empathizing with those actually caught in the struggle in the white savior or in this case the ally story It's the white savior you're meant to relate to. And in this pattern, a dangerous precedent is set. The savior is the hero and the persecuted is the other meant to be saved. But to my knowledge and everything that Marvel Comics have actually said, that's not what the stories are. These are just ally covers. Yeah, they're just variant covers. Honestly, it's not bad marketing for Marvel and DC because let's be perfectly honest, without characters like Daredevil, on a cover with Rachel Summers, nobody's going to buy it. Yeah, this is mostly a business decision, and I think people would have noticed by now, Pride Month is less a celebration of the uh, LGBTQIA plus community and more of a marketing pitch now. It's just used by companies that have kind of um, appropriated the month itself just to use it to sell special shirts and shit like that. If they were actually able to sell these characters on their own merit, you wouldn't need a special month. They'd be doing it all the time. Every single week, there'd be essentially a pride cover if that actually sold. It's just a crass marketing scheme. Yeah, even companies that make no sense, like Skittles taste the rainbow. All the colors of Skittles represent the rainbow. The rainbow is, you know, the rainbow flag, at least, is the symbolism for Pride Month and all that kind of stuff. They're like, well, we can't join in because we're already rainbows. Let's make ours white. (laughs) That one backfired on them, too. That one was probably my favorite crass marketing gimmick. You could have figured out a way to twist your existing marketing gimmick. But no, no, you made them all white, which was like, (laughs) I mean, personally, I found it hilarious. The white savior narrative, Doc? (laughs) I feel like it. Like, hey, look, we are Skittles white saviors now. (laughs) I I, I saw that one. it, it, It was. Per- personally, it was one of my favorite of all time. I it's right up there with the, the Donald Trump taco, taco bowl. That's like my favorite social media engagement of all times. So I guess that was on Facebook. Yeah, and the, the so. Skittles like taste the white for Pride Month was great. <laughs> yeah, it's right the- up there. Uh, next up, Ashley said the fact that these variant covers are called allies variant signals the divide clearly. I don't think there would be a problem to have Daredevil on a Pride cover. But the fact that Marvel is highlighting allies in the title and making the divide so clear, oh no, it's not that Daredevil's queer, it's just he's an ally is the problem. It takes that attention that should be placed on queer stories and instead places it on dynamics between the ally and the queer hero, focusing on the celebration on the ally and the ally ship instead of the people that Pride Month is meant to celebrate. But here's the thing, if they put Daredevil on a Pride Month cover and it just said Pride Month, people would think the character was gay. 
there would be an yep. enormous backlash against Marvel Comics and they would stop buying the character, assuming that he was just going to become the next Bobby Drake Iceman to where he lost any sense of heroism or his personality and just became, you know, gay Bobby Drake. And that's why they have to put allies on there because everybody, not just you and I, but also, you know, the LGBTQIA plus community as well would jump on the bandwagon and be like, see, I knew it. Matt Murak was always gay. And you would end up with a lot of perfectly normal people. One of his major personality traits is the fact that he's Catholic and they turned him also gay because this is modern Marvel. That would be the initial perception and the perception would never go away. Like, it is weird highlighting the allies of Pride Month with Marvel Comics. What hero isn't an ally? Like Daredevil would make sense not to be. Nightcrawler exactly. would kind of make sense not to be because they are deep religious, you know, Catholic uh, men within the Marvel Comics universe. And we know they're never going to do that. All the characters there are allies. The one I could think of is not even Marvel. He's DC Comics. He would be the Spectre because he has been portrayed and characterized in the past as being deeply homophobic. But even fucking Tim Sheridan undid that within his stupid Alan Scott book. But no, they're not going to do that. Instead, absolutely everybody, every single hero is going to be fully on board with the agenda, no matter what, because otherwise it would put Marvel and DC in a position where, hey, look, this is a questionable perspective instead of no, this is absolutely 100% the truth. Uh, well, they, is, and they have a right to be afraid, Doc, you know, yes. Marvel and DC, because even if you take the worst villain in your universe, let, let's say Dark Side right. from DC Comics, and you have him say something racist, they will say that the writer is racist, that DC yep. Comics are racist, even though you put that point of view on somebody. That is clearly completely fucking evil. It's why there's no fucking villains left in comics. Well, I might be a Nazi, but at least I'm not a white supremacist. I mean, look, if we break it down to its uh, to its core, it's a bunch of people that are very, very, oh, let's just say self-conscious about their own bigotries. So they pretend that they don't and they pretend that they don't so much that even the idea of somebody else being able to see that perspective is less virtuous than them because it's performative in the first place. This is the final word from Ashley Babb. It's easy to say that at the very least, this line is a betrayal of the spirit of Pride Month, but when compared to what DC Comics are doing on the other side of the pond with their Pride Anthology, Marvel Comics attempts at Pride Month. Celebration looks behind the times and naive. It also reflects their regular portrayal of their queer characters. The fact that practically none of the queer characters being spotlighted in June currently have their own series echoes this issue. And that really does spell out an inherent problem with what DC and especially Marvel are doing when they've taken a lot of these characters like a Bobby Drake and they've wrapped him in the LGBTQIA plus a flag or they create a new character like a Somnus. The only thing the character can be at that point is gay, it can only be queer representation. They're not really allowed to be superheroes anymore because superheroes fail because superheroes get put in really bad spots. Superheroes get hurt. You're not allowed to do anything like that with these characters. You're not allowed to challenge them basically on any level whatsoever because they have protected status in the real world. So they must have protected status within the 616. That doesn't make for good, awesome superhero storytelling. So there's nothing they can do with these characters. You put them in a, a double-edged sword situation where they get the initial you know, media hype and everything like that, bring these characters out of the closet or whatever they're doing. But the idea of putting them in difficult circumstances, the kind that we would expect our superhero characters to be placed in. There's a running commentary in the media and in social media circles that by doing that, you are displaying your homophobia. You are displaying your, you know, bigotry. You are displaying whatever it is. So as a result, none of the characters are able to do anything. And since they can't be challenged, they can't be threatened, and they can't be possibly even killed, you've taken away all of the potential stakes of a superhero story. And as you are a superhero comic book publisher, there's not much story-wise you're able to do with these characters afterwards. And because it's so predictable, nobody's willing to buy it. So now you have essentially an unmarketable character you sideline them and throw them on the shelf just to bring them out as a celebration periodically, be it during Pride Month or whatever other, you know, the Hellfire Gala 
whatever other thing is going to possibly pander to a queer audience that might buy a single book, but is it going to buy it on a monthly basis? And it's not large enough to actually support ongoing status. I understand whenever they didn't know initially and they thought it was going to be like a a sales boom by making some of these characters target an audience that might be underrepresented or underserved. But once they've seen what the fallout was when they actually still tried to do superhero stories and the fact that there was a backlash to even putting them in a challenging situation. I do think in a lot of ways, this is Marvel Comics kind of acknowledging that they've reached critical mass on this. They can't take any more established characters like a Bobby Drake or what DC have done with John Ken or Tim Drake and, and turn them gay. That doesn't work. People stop supporting the character. They can't really create new LGBTQIA characters because if they do that, they have to hire a Steve Fox or a Steve Orlando because you can't have anyone that's not LGBTQIA plus actually writing a comic book with a gay character in a starring role or this audience that they've courted for so long will turn on them and they're kind of just throwing their hands up and saying, well, we'll just put the characters that sell anyway and we'll throw a little pride allies on there and hopefully it makes good business. Nobody's going to buy the, the the cover with just Rachel Gray on it. They will buy it whenever Daredevil's on the cover. They're not going to do it if Somnus is on the cover because 90% of people will be like, who in the fuck is this guy? Uh, but if they stick Wolverine next to him, maybe. They're not going to do it with Iceman because, honestly, they've broken Iceman and most of the audience, their potential audience knows it. So that's not going to work either. They're in a catch-22, and this is their way of just kind of dealing with it at this point. Even that is not the uh, appropriate thing because, you know, folks like Ashley Babb don't want to acknowledge that they got what they wanted for the last few years, and it broke the characters, and they are now unmarketable. So the only thing that they have to do in order to market things is to put somebody that still is marketable on the cover. And the only way to do that and make it make sense is by calling them an ally. Absolutely. Now, we did have a longer discussion on this. It will be on Thinking Critical Patreon, where we have the Doc is Right here, and you get a lot more Doc, upwards of three hours every single week of extra bonus content featuring the main man himself. Absolutely. Come on over to the Patreon. It's where the, the, the best stuff lives. And there is a link in the video description to go check that out.